Welcome to the Leader Trek's Youth Ministry Training Cast with Doug Franklin, where we help youth workers like yourself be intentional. Hey, everybody. Uh, Dan and, and Doug here at Leader Trek's Youth Ministry. Welcome back to another Leader Trek's Youth Ministry Training Cast. We are we're really excited, actually, to, to film this one. Um, but there's a lot going on here at Leader Treks these days. Excited doesn't doesn't quite. Do That's it. true. I know it's <laughs> it's it's underplaying it. There's underplaying it. Yeah, there's a there's a ton going on these days, right? Mm -hmm. Like we've got uh, we've got a few new staff who have joined our team, and and they are off on this really cool training trip out in Montana that is just pushing them to the limit. Like they are challenging themselves in a lot of new and exciting ways. Uh, one of the reasons why we really, really do this trip every year with our staff is knowing that if, if, we, if we don't challenge ourselves really well, it's really hard to challenge students. And it's one of the things we value a ton here at Leader Treks. We've also had a, a brand new deep discipleship curriculum come out in the last few weeks. Two the of core, them. Yeah, that's true. It, adding to the black letters, which just came out. Uh, another D now study, Outcast, looking at John 4 and Jesus' encounter with the woman at the well. The graphics on it are awesome. They are. They are really cool. The topic is super cool and I think very timely. Outsiders are welcome, mm -hmm. and we, we want to create youth ministries that do that. But I, the graphics are so cool. They are cool. They are cool. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot going on here these days at Leader Trek's Youth Ministry, uh, but today we wanted to shoot this training cast, and, and we're excited about the topic. It's a topic that is really important in youth ministry, right? And it's one that, that every youth pastor, uh, they experience daily, but it's something that doesn't always get talked about in a very uh, productive and honest way, yeah. and that is the relationship between the senior pastor and the youth pastor. Now, I want to say this just from the, from the get out that a lot of you have phenomenal relationships with your senior pastor. You know, we've heard from youth pastors over and over and over again. I have this awesome relationship with my senior pastor. We do so, so much great ministry and work together. I love it. I wouldn't go anywhere else. And that is great. But we also hear from other youth pastors and, um, Sometimes that relationship is so destructive. Yeah. You know, youth pastors uh, go to work at a, at, a, at a church and they expect the senior pastor to mentor them yeah. and help them grow. The senior pastor just wanted to hire somebody, some, hire somebody to hate, take care of the students right. and they want out of it and they don't want anything to do with it. And that relationship can have some missed expectation and, and not just pain for the youth worker, there can be pain for the spouse as well too. It can be a very... I, I've sat with a lot of spouses of youth workers who've just cried and said, yeah. this, this relationship is so bad, I want out of the church. Yeah. And I think when we hear that, we know we got a problem. Right. And we've heard so many of both of these stories, you know, at, at, at how many refuel retreats that we've led and, and, and youth pastors just open up about everything that is going on. And so today we want to address this very directly and talk about it. How do you, how do you have a relationship that brings great fruit in, in your own life personally but also for the ministry and the church as a whole. You know, we, 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 we actually tackled this subject a number of years ago. Uh, it was really on your heart. It was a burden for you having a, a pass of being a youth pastor and having multiple different senior pastors. You some know good, the, yeah. some, some a struggle. Right, you know the value <laughs> of that relationship. Yeah, we actually went out and we interviewed 100 senior pastors and 100 youth pastors, and we asked them a series of questions trying to get at the heart of the issue of, of this disconnect. That's what we ended up calling the book, The Disconnect. Yeah. But what we found was really unusual and something that was super surprising to us. Yeah, so, so walk us through that. What, what was the most shocking and surprising thing? I, I think it was this, that youth pastors valued impact. Like if their senior pastor was having impact, there was people coming to church and they were, they were, they were coming to know Christ. They were being discipled. They were growing. They were going out and serving with their gifts. The youth pastor said, the senior pastor matters. Mm -hmm. The senior pastor, on the other hand, had a different value system. What was that? The value system was time served. I've been here 25 years. If I've been here 25 years, you got to respect me. Yeah. And I think that those two value systems are good. I don't think they're either one's bad, sure. but they're different. And because the youth pastor sometimes doesn't know that they have a different value system than the senior pastor, 
there's, there's um, uh, the warm air of expectations meets the cold air of reality, and we got a thunderstorm. Yeah, the collision takes place. The collision takes place, and the youth pastor always loses Yeah. because of just the way the hierarchy of the church is set up. That's true. And oftentimes, youth pastors are blindsided by this storm. They're, they, they, they never see it coming. They wanted, a, they wanted a different type of relationship with the senior pastor, and they don't get it. And yeah. so there, there's a number of things that go into this, but these different values, Value systems are what creates the storm that leads to the disconnect. Yeah. So, so in thinking through that disconnect that mm -hmm. can exist mm -hmm. or that might exist, what are, what, are, what are some practical ways that a youth pastor could bridge that gap mm -hmm. with their senior pastor? Stay in your office, really whine about it to your friends, <laughs> and um, it'll get better. No. Write a blog about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But anonymously. Uh, <laughs> hey, listen, we got to make a decision because... We're, we're pretty frustrated. I know a lot of youth pastors are pretty frustrated. Spouses at home are really frustrated yeah. and they, they want out and leaves the youth pastor in the middle and it's just really hard. What we got to think though is we got to think about positive steps that we can take to build a stronger relationship with our senior pastor. And there's, there's five things that we identify through our interviews that we think are their rubs, their yeah. struggles, their difficulties. And I think that there's there's ways to really overcome them, but one, we got to identify them and then we got to begin to work on them. And this book, The Disconnect, is all about how do you, how do you bridge the disconnect? How do, you, how do you get together so that you can actually have a really great relationship? One, that brings glory to Jesus Christ and yeah. two, moves the church forward. Yep. And I think everybody wants to do that. So that's, that was sort of what we came out with. So what are those five? Okay, well, the first one was communication. What we found is that youth pastors and senior pastors did not have a really good way to communicate with each other, and there was a big disconnect. So just, just imagine this. It's Thursday <coughs> Excuse me, at church, and you're, you're leaving church, and the senior pastor sees you in the parking lot and says, how did youth group go last night? And you turn to the youth pa senior pastor and you say, oh, we had, we had 25 students. And he goes, oh, okay, great. We'll see you. Have a nice night. And you walk away and you think, all he cares about is the numbers. Yeah. Right? right. And the senior pastor walks away and he goes, you know what? All he can ever tell me are what the numbers are. Right. But in that moment, the youth pastor didn't really think through how to communicate the transformation that took place, the word of God that was shared that night, mm -hmm. students that made commitments or applications to God's word. And because we don't communicate the right way, two people walk away from that conversation and they don't understand one another. Yeah. And so what we've got to do as youth pastors is we've got to realize that our communication with our senior pastor has got to be really intentional. That we've got to really think through what it is that we want to communicate and be prepared for the short amount of time that we get to talk with um, him or her. Right. And so I think it's really important that we think through really good communication. In other words, don't talk numbers, don't talk about activities or weather or what you ate on the fall retreat. Talk about what students learned. Right. Talk about how students are growing. Talk about the change in adult volunteers because of their interaction with students. Talk about what matters. Yeah. And if you'll communicate what matters, I believe your senior pastor will then be open to being able to communicate with you with what matters as well. And this is not really that hard, no. right? I no. mean, things that matter are happening every single day in our ministries. And we just need to be telling people about that. We gotta be prepared. Yep. The thing about it is, is you're always gonna meet the senior pastor at the moment where you don't expect to. In yeah. the elevator, on the staircase, on the way to the cars, you're trying to get the kids in the car, you're, you're trying to find that one form you lost, and you, and you gotta be ready. And that, that communication is a really big one. Okay, so that's number one, mm -hmm. communication. What about, what about two? Shared values. You gotta get to know what your senior pastor values. Yeah. And oftentimes I hear youth pastors say, well, he doesn't value what's important. What you're really saying is he doesn't value what I value. Right. <laughs> and while I'm sure you're uh, feeling a lot of pressures and you're, you've been involved in ministry a while and you're seeing things that are really important to you, they may be really different to your senior pastor. He may be feeling different pressures from elders and from different people mm -hmm. in the church, things you don't see, things in his own life. And so walk a mile in his shoes, yeah. as Elvis Presley once said, is that if we can actually find out what they value, so ask questions of your senior pastor, what's important to you? What are your priorities? What are you trying to do? And then to be able to think, okay, I'm gonna make those my values. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna share those values with him and I'm gonna actually try to see what he sees so that I can understand his perspective. 
We both have different perspectives. If we can spend a little time understanding their perspective, maybe we're gonna see things a little differently. Yeah, and that helps so much. I mean, mm -hmm. just, just knowing how the other person thinks and why they're valuing those things, mm -hmm. God, that, that, that makes a big difference. Yeah, and then there's the issue of money. Yeah. And money is a big one. See, the senior pastor asks for anything and he gets what he wants. You're trying to survive on your salary right. and with your tiny little budget, and it can become aggravating, right? Because yeah. you love your students, and you know that with a little bit more budget, you could do some incredible things to because reach students. Because you value impact. Right, right. And so money can become a real um, anger point. Yeah. And so what I would say is this, is that you got to talk about money with your church. you got to have an elder that you can share about your salary and whether or not your salary is really making it or not. When I wrote this book, I was surprised at how many youth pastors I found that were living on food stamps. Yeah. And that's not right. No. But almost in every one of those cases, when I asked those youth pastors, is, does your church know your situation? The answer was no. No. But we, but we also asked, like, if um, th there were some situations where they did, right? Yeah. Where they told them about it, and yeah. the church went, oh, we didn't know. This isn't right. We right. need to step in. We need yeah. to help. So you got to talk about money with your senior pastor or with the key elder or executive pastor at your church. So all the time, when you, if you get an evaluation, if you get a chance to sit down with them, if you get a chance to have one lunch a year with your senior pastor, talk money. Yeah. Make, don't make money taboo. Make, make money sort of something you talk about on a regular basis. You'll understand his perspective more and he'll understand your perspective more. Yeah. It's a big one. So, so one, two, three, what was the fourth one? Fourth one was expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, the truth of the matter is, is that the biggest waste of paper in a church is a job description. Mm. Because you get a job description and then you find out what your job's really all about. Right. And oftentimes there's mixed expectations. And youth pastors told us about this all the time. Youth Senior pastors were adding to their job descriptions all the time, including always being the IT guy because the senior pastor doesn't know anything about technology, which is okay. But the youth pastor needs to be able to say at times, hey, I just need to tell you, this is a little outside of my job description and it's a little bit more than what I can handle and my hours are going over. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be a way that you can talk about expectations with your senior pastor. Hey, I'm on board. I want to help. But let me tell you something. This is where I'm at with my ministry hours. This is where I'm at with what I'm doing with students. Yeah. I'm kind of maxed out here. Could you get some additional help somewhere else? But when we keep on saying yes, 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 then we get to the place where we just we're just so frustrated and so angry. Yeah, and we crash. And this is also where so many spouses were frustrated, right? Yeah. Because there are expectations that were put onto them that you didn't know about or right. that they didn't know about. And so walking through that is extremely important and very healthy. I would say the key to this is get an elder who's on your side yeah. and communicate with that elder these pressures. Very important. The last one was this, shared mission. Do you know that the senior pastor and the youth pastor are actually ministering to the same families? Right. You know, one is ministering to students and one is ministering maybe to parents and students. And oftentimes they're never on the same page. Yeah. You know, and there's some, there's some great curriculums out there that try to help you do that. But for a lot of churches they don't actually ever get together and share this mission. I think one of the things to do is to share oftentimes your burden with your senior pastor for the families that he is ministering to as well too and ask him the exact same question. Mm -hmm. What burden do you feel for these families and how are you ministering to them and how could we work together, share one common message that could actually help these families really begin to grow on both ends, kid end and adult end. And I think that when you're actually able to do that, you're actually able to feel like we're a team yeah. more than we're two silos fighting against each other. Yeah, because you are. The church is a team, right? And we should be connected and united in the shared mission because we're going out yeah. and, and serving the same people. Yeah. The key is, youth workers, don't just moan about it. Go out and try to make a difference. Yeah. I always find this, that when I do social activities with people, I actually begin to build deeper relationships with them that'll cover a lot of frustrations and angers. Yeah. So find out what your senior pastor loves to do. If he loves to bowl, I'm sorry, uh, you're gonna have to go bowling. <laughs> um, but whatever he loves to do, ask him if you can do it with him. Spend some social time together. Invite the senior pastor and his, and his wife over to your house for dinner. Crazy, I know. But these kind of things will actually bridge the gap of the disconnect and can make a real difference in your relationship. Relationships that don't honor God are just hurting the church, yeah, right? They are. They're hurting you. They're hurting so many things. Let's get past it. Let's start to work on it. I think we can begin to make a real difference. 
The book is The Disconnect. This side was written for youth workers. This side was written for senior pastors. And there's an activity after every chapter mm -hmm. that you can do with your senior pastor. So ask your senior pastor, can we go through this book together? Can we do some of these activities together? I know a lot of youth pastors have told me my senior pastor won't do it. And I'm sorry that that would be the case. But ask. I think it's worth the ask to see if it could happen. It could make a real difference. This is available on our website. It's pretty reasonable, $7.95. And uh, this tool could actually really help you have a great relationship with your senior pastor. Well, thanks uh, again for joining us, the Leader Treks uh, Youth Ministry Training Cast. We hope this has been useful and, and beneficial for you. Touch back, uh, you know, whenever whenever you can. Just so you know, there's going to be uh, kind of like a walkthrough and, and questions for you to work through in regards to this training cast. You can find it on the freebie section of our website. Thanks again. We really appreciate it. See you soon.